Happy Soulful Sunday. This message is for you. I will not be attaching any hashtags. It's for you to hear. I've been waiting for a while to do this video. If you have been following me, you know that I went to the Vatican City. This is my second time there and I really wanted to soak it all in and then come to talk about it. Now, political views and religion are the number one things that people stay away or they actually go towards the controversy to get more followers, to get more content or because they just can't accept what's going on. But when we're giving them all that attention, we're giving them energy because everything is energy, what we focus on. So I wanted to be very clear when talking about the Vatican. Now I went for the second time and I saw things with a different point of view, with a different perspective. Uh, the first time I really didn't know what to expect other than learning history and remember history is only told in bits and pieces and from people's different perspective. The second time around now after COVID I see things very clearly and I will tell you that the Vatican is, let's start with the facts, it is a country. So it has the potential to govern, governor, to govern all of its people. For example, if there's a priest in California, it's part of the Vatican. It's part of that whole hierarchy. And if something goes wrong, they can extradite and put them in a different country per se. It is a lot of power for just one entity. Now you have to understand that this all started after the crucifixion of Christ. Now this is not, oh, this Jesus person's over here. No, I'm telling you facts, you take it for what it is because I don't like labels. People can call me a Christian, people can call me a witch. And whatever label you grab as your reality, that's what you become. I am all about facts and revelations and I am all, I am the balance, I say, because every pathway, every pathway that we go through will have some truth and also some made up, or not made up, but just made from that perspective of point of view. So getting back to the Vatican, the Vatican started after the crucifixion of Jesus. Our actual current calendar starts from that moment. 2024 starts from the time that Jesus was crucified. That is our calendar. Why are they embedded in it so much? And also with grabbing uh, something that was so gracious and so good like Jesus, because Jesus was an actual person. Even though some people say, oh, he wasn't real. He was real. There is DNA to prove that he uh, was a real human being that did miracles because he was obedient to his truth. And his truth looked very different and he came to break the church. He came to destroy whatever was before him so that you could follow what they say is follow him. And they started with this whole religion when he was trying to stay, say that I am the follow within, follow your purpose, follow your light. But what did they do 300 years after the fact that they put him on the cross? What did they do? They started a religion and for good they say, because we're gonna spread the gospel of Jesus. The true followers of Jesus that really got it, they went within and then lived their purpose. Like the mother of Jesus ended up in Greece in a basilica, her bones are still there. Now all this could be proven. She lived her life and she knew that everything had a purpose. It is known uh, in the holy mountain in Greece that all these herbs are being grown there and they heal the body. Why? Because we knew that everything had a purpose. Everyone has a purpose. My purpose is going to look different than yours. If you follow my footprint and you do as I'm doing, it will not be your happiness because you're following Nora. I am following the within. 
And no coincidence, Nora means light. I follow the light, but that's my truth. That's my reality. I live my truth as Nora. And I'm telling you, this is the time of being able to see all truth, all of it, all the deceptions, all of that but we can't feed into it. So getting back to the Vatican, I go and I appreciate so much knowledge. They have every God you can think of from the goddess of abundance, which I will put some photos together at the end of this. The goddess of abundance that was worshiped by so many um, was there. And she's also the uh, true representation of a woman. She has multiple breasts. She's a nurturer. She's a um, whatever. She was worshipped. And it's there. But doesn't that go against what the church, that church te teaches you, right? Don't they say, oh, go to God or you're not supposed to do any of this uh, idolization of others? But this is what they have inside the Vatican. And this is just what we see because there's so much underneath the Vatican. There's miles and miles of actual library and they hold all a truth. The Gnostics were people that they weren't fighting. They, they, they weren't about that. All they were about was just like the name Gnostic. It means knowledge. They, were, they would write down. They were like historians today. And they would write down so much knowledge. When uh, they were about to get conquered and converted into the church, the Catholic Roman Church, and then they buried all these scrolls and they converted because they were people of peace and all they wanted was knowledge. So by this time we have a Bible, right? You know, we have scripts that are only ex um, able to be seen by holy people, people that were part of the church, people that were a priest, you know, something like that. That was the only way that you can actually hold these scriptures or a Bible per se. And so many people converted just to have the word. Something that we have at the tip of our hands and a lot of people say, well, it's not all the truth, but it is some truth. There are words. These are testimonies of people, of facts that happen, but there's a lot of stuff that was left out. And now we're in that time of knowing everything and put all the pieces together. So the Gnostics did bury everything and it was preserved for like 2000 years. It was discovered at the beginning of last century and they've been made into books like the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of uh, Ezekiel, uh, the Gospel of Mary. So these are all true events like memoirs of how they lived their life, etc. Uh, for example, the Gospel of Thomas, he would write down everything that Jesus would say. Jesus didn't, wasn't a a person of many words because he knew how powerful the word was. So whatever he would say was very profound. So he would write down that. So anyways, all that knowledge is here today. Is there some kept in the Vatican? Of course, they don't feel like we're ready. And that also has a way of controlling the mass. Now you're going to say, oh my God, Nora, no te metas con mi religión. You know, this has given me faith and I'm not knocking it because I've known people and even on my way back from Europe, I sat next to a man that uh, his faith for the Catholic Church is everything. He sings in the choir around the world. It's brought so many blessings to his family. I have family members that are so in you know uh, in the faith that they go to church every day but that's their purpose this is how they see the light so we can't knock the church maybe the ones on top but the church we are the church and there's good and bad there's choices that are made throughout right so in any group of people you could say, oh my God, that group of people is so bad. You can't do that anymore because we're all a big old mix. So I can't say that everybody from the Catholic Church is bad and they went in there with you know, malintent where I can actually see and know that some people went into that belief or in that uh, religion to try to make the change. And that's just from my family alone. If we go back to the 1500s, I have documents that will be in my new book that show our bloodline going all the way to the 1500s and 
my direct descendant is was the curandero, the doctor of the Spanish kingdom. His brother was a priest. And the reason he was a priest was to be able to get a hold of the Bible and be able to read the word and actually, you know, maybe infiltrate. I don't know what you would call it, but they were Jewish. And this is the only way that they were able to survive. But he was living like a man. And why, what I mean with that is that he had a child. And so he lived like a man. He lived a huge lie. And in his perspective was to do good, to know good, to be able to survive. Where other people say, oh my God, he was horrible. Like, why would he do that? Like he was, you know, cheating the church and living like a man. We could see it from every perspective. So just in my story alone, I can tell you facts that there's good and there's good decisions or, or bad decisions made for good in your mind. But at the end, they're hurting people and that's where we're at. So I don't want to say, you know, <sighs> we're under the Roman rule. We are. But it's, there's enough of us to break that. There's enough of us to live truth and know what is what at this point. We see it. I posted a video earlier today where they give you facts of what happens with the abortions that people have, with those fetuses, right? With those babies, with those cells, if you want to call them. They make a lot of money off of it, right? Because you can, you know, use them for vaccines. You can use them for, you know, creams. I know of certain creams that have those cells and they're sold, you know, to keep you young. Like this sounds like from a horror movie, but this is real. So we're in that time of seeing. So now, instead of being like, oh, you know, the politicians want to, you know, um, cover my rights. They're all for the woman so I can have an abortion until nine months if my health depends on it, you know, and I can speak on that. Let me tell you, because I've had an abortion as a teen. And then that was presented to me when I was about to have my child, my last baby that's about to be 28. And I've never talked about this publicly because it's not really, it's my story, but it's his story. They gave me the option to give him, you know, to have an abortion at five and a half months because they said he wasn't going to be, quote and unquote, normal. And I had that choice. I mean, by this time, the baby's full grown. They give you this, you know, all these horrible scenarios and you end up believing it. And I'll tell you for a second, I was like, yeah, I can't do this. Like, I have to go this way. But I didn't. The baby started moving that day. And I got a slap from my mother-in-law. She's like, wake up. You have to, you know, be right here in this moment and get all the facts. You cannot make this decision in this minute. You have to go home and think about it. What I'm trying to tell you is that there's good and there's light and dark in everything. And what we focus on, where we give our energy, that's what's gonna grow. And we cannot unsee anything anymore. Whatever you see, it's going to stay with you whether you want to forget it or not. So I've learned in this last year, starting in January, that I didn't know it at the time, but it was, you know, spirit giving me that fire to connect to my family, the past, you know the older generation. There's a reason why we come in this bloodline. It's to learn and then you realize that you have to heal the old in order to move forward. And it's been a time of, I mean, it's, I'm always learning. I'm always seeing why things happen the way they happen. Sometimes they don't make sense in the moment. And then later on you're like, wow, that had to happen in order for myself to take these steps. Sometimes you're so caught up with doing, 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 and even for others that you forget to live your true purpose. And again, your purpose is going to be very different. And it, sometimes it's a very difficult choice because it's going to get you out of your comfort zone of what you know, of what you were programmed in the past. So it's a scary move, right? But you gotta change and you gotta go. You gotta keep flowing and you have to be like the butterfly. You have to continue to evolve. 
and pick and choose what you want to be. What is your story going to say? And it's not with words, it's with your actions. It's not social media, the prettiest pictures, and all of this amazing, you know, facade, right? Because you don't know what's real or not at this point. We have the AI that could literally, you know, copy my voice. And is it really Nora saying this stuff? <laughs> But yeah, we're in that time. It sounds like movies and we're in that time. So what's real and what's not? What's real is what you do. If you've stayed on this whole conversation that I'm having with you for the 15 minutes, I applaud you because our attention is very short. So thank you for giving me this time. And it's not giving it to me, but giving it to the light. And just remember that the only way to change is within. You have to, you don't have to say too much. You just have to live your truth. And when everybody starts living their truth, no matter what it is, no matter what political party you're from, no matter what race you are, no matter what sexual preference you have, it doesn't really matter. It's what you do. Are you someone of the light? Are you really looking at yourself and being aware of not hurting others around you because our actions matter? You have to really look at yourself. We're in that time. And there's no more excuses and there's no more like, oh, this is the bad party and this is the bad religion. And that No. We're all individuals. And until you accept it and you start, stop pointing those fingers, we're not going to be able to grow. And the time is here, so you better get on board. So again, going back to the Vatican, if I learned one thing was that from anything, even if it was created to overpower, control, and for darkness, it doesn't matter. If you want to see the light in something, you will. So it's time for us to see the light and stop focusing on that darkness so we can level off. The balance is a beautiful dance. Even chaos in order is beautiful. It's a dance, but not when it's off balance. We have to bring the balance back. And what that is, is Christ, the coming of Jesus. What does that mean? Love, for you to be love, for you to be the I am. We're all getting there, but you gotta jump on board. The faster, we get on board to live our truth the faster we could live in true peace and harmony. And not only the United States, but the entire world. Again, I give you my experiences so you could validate my words. God has put me in places so I can testify. I've been around the world and I have brothers and sisters around the world that are all trying to be the best version of self and leading with their heart and their truth is gonna look different. And we all struggle, but we're there seeing that there's so many of us and that gives us hope because together we are stronger. So happy Soulful Sunday. So we can find a Perspective. Same size. You see how big that looks? That little one over there is the same exact size. It's all about perspective. Verónica.